In the late 90s, I loved playing flight sim games on my PC because I had a really cool flight joystick that made me feel like I was actually flying a real jet. But I always assumed that those kind of experiences were limited to the PC because I didn't think anyone was releasing flight joysticks for consoles at the time. Turns out, I was wrong. This is the Quick Shot Nitro Stick for the Nintendo 64. Pew pew! Pew! The Quick Shot Nitro Stick is a flight stick for the Nintendo 64 that features all the same buttons and inputs that you would find on a traditional Nintendo 64 controller. It even has a controller pack input at the front for memory cards and rumble packs. Now, while memory cards are simple enough to put in here, what I wouldn't recommend is putting in a rumble pack. See, this controller really works best on a table. So if you were to put a rumble pack in there, well, your damn controller would just vibrate all over the place, and I don't think anybody really wants that. Plus, it just makes a horrible noise. Since this controller has all the same buttons as a regular Nintendo 64 controller, you can play every single Nintendo 64 game on it that utilizes real controllers. The only problem is that some of the games probably don't feel very comfortable while using a flight stick. Like for instance, I played GoldenEye 64 with this controller, and although you can play it and it works sort of okay, it feels a lot better with a traditional Nintendo 64 controller simply because you're not flailing your hand all over the place. You have a lot of precision input with this thing, but that's not the kind of stuff you want for GoldenEye 64, since the guns in GoldenEye 64 kind of aim themselves, which is really, you know, a cool feature for a first-person shooter on consoles, but it's something that doesn't really work very well with this controller. To be honest, when I first saw this controller, only one game came to mind. Star Fox. I plugged in Star Fox as soon as I got home and played it with this controller, and guys, it was weird. Y you would expect this thing to work great with Star Fox because, I mean, come on, it's like the best flight game on the Nintendo 64, but for some reason, I don't think they were thinking of Star Fox 64 when they were making this controller. On the joystick itself, you'll find your B and A buttons where your thumb placement will be. Between those two buttons, you'll find a hat switch, and a hat switch is essentially just your D-pad. On the other side of this joystick, you'll find your Z button, and that's where I had my biggest problem. See, the Z button in Star Fox 64 is originally not used to shoot anything, which on this controller setup, well, you'd think that's what it would be used for, but that's not how it works. The original game doesn't feature a remappable option in the control setting, so you're limited to using the Z button for what it was originally used for, which unfortunately is just to tilt your R wing. While I did enjoy the movement features with this controller, especially in first person view mode, I gotta say that without the ability to use the back button there to actually fire at anything, just, I don't know, it pulled me out of the experience and it didn't really feel like a really good flight game, which is really unfortunate. Everything else on this controller works absolutely fine. All the rest of the button placements are great, but it's just that one problem with this one specific game, which is really why I bought this controller in the first place. Fortunately though, this controller has one really cool ability. Underneath the controller, there's a little switch that switches the joystick between analog and digital mode. And what that basically means is, well, if you have it on analog mode, the joystick works like an analog joystick. But if you switch it to digital mode, it replicates the D-pad input on the joystick itself. What this means is that if there's a game out there for the Nintendo 64 that used the D-pad input instead of the analog joystick, you can switch this controller to digital mode and use the actual joystick as your D-pad input, which is a pretty cool feature. But honestly, there's not many Nintendo 64 games out there that do that, so I don't know. A neat feature, but one that might not really be used. I'm a sucker for these kinds of controllers, but unfortunately because button remapping isn't built into the controller itself, you'll probably find that there's some games out there that are just really awkward to play because of some strange button placements. And that kind of sucks. However, if you do have a game out there in mind that has a lot of button remappability options and maybe just a whole bunch of button control settings, you'll find that this controller will work really well with games like that because you can just set anything to how you feel. Unfortunately though, a lot of games on Intel 64 aren't really like that, so you're kind of limited. But once again, this is the kind of controller that I like a lot, so if you're a fan of flight games and you know of a flight game that has a lot of those options on the Nintendo 64, you simply gotta try this controller.